What's going on, engineers? So in previous videos, we looked at the basics of HTML and CSS and kind of what the different tags did and the properties did, but we haven't actually put all that together to create anything. So in this video, we're going to put it all together and build something. So let's get into it. I started by going to Dribbble to figure out what I wanted to build, and I went to that site because they have a bunch of mockups of things that are not actually in HTML and CSS. I wanted to find something that wasn't overly complicated, but enough to where I would use the majority of the properties that we've talked about in the previous videos. And what I landed on was this thing on the right. It's just a tiny UI fragment that says rental agreement. And this is what we're going to rebuild today. And specifically, what we're going to re rebuild is the stuff in the white box, and then we'll use a purple background, and that will be it. And for reference, I left what we're going to build in the bottom left-hand corner. We'll start by making the background purple. So I grab my little color picker here, and I'll grab a nice purple there. Copy that hex code into our CSS, and we're going to apply this to the body tag. And then we'll simply do background and then paste our purple in there. The next thing I'm going to build is the actual box that holds everything. But before we do that, let's actually analyze it and see what we need to do. Sorry, the quality is not that great. Remember, this is a mock-up. It's not in HTML and CSS, so it's just an image. And looking at this, there is a couple elements that I know we're going to have to implement. And for this box, we know the box is going to have to have a fixed width sitting in the middle of the purple area. Second is that this box has rounded corners, so I we'll have to implement that as well. Now, if you look closely, there is some padding here, and it kind of goes around all of the content. So we know the padding is going to end up being maybe a 15 pixel padding. As far as the HTML goes, the HTML is pretty simple. It's just going to be a div with a class. We'll call it box. And then we're just going to style that box using CSS. The first is creating the box class and then setting it to be the right background. So we'll grab our color picker and then we'll click inside the box. And it's actually just a solid white. So that makes it easy. Just do background FFF. Of course, there's no content in the box. So we'll just add some content real quick just so we can see the background. And then now we'll set the remaining style elements. So it's going to have to be a fixed width, and that's how we're going to center it in the middle of the page. So we'll set a fixed width of about 300 pixels. That should be enough. Then to center it in the page, we're going to set a margin. So we're going to set a top and bottom margin of 40 pixels, and then a left and right margin of auto, which will take up the remaining space. So we can use the shorthand, which is just 40px auto, and that will bring it into the middle of the page. We'll then, of course, add our padding, which I'm going to estimate to be about 20 pixels. It could be less. We'll change it later if we need to. And that will add the proper padding. And then finally, the rounded borders, we can use border radius. And we'll set maybe 15 pixels. Okay, that ended up being way too much. So let's take that down to like 8. That's still probably too much, so let's take it down to 6 pixels. That looks perfect. And then all I did here is I just used the browser zoom feature just so everybody can see it bigger. So next two things we're going to build is this rental agreement title with the edit button and then the tenant sent and then the date. To make this, we'll end up having two divs, one div around rental agreements and the edit button. The edit button will be a button which will float to the right Then the rental agreements will be one of the header tags. Then we'll have a second div that wraps tenant sent and the date and that's going to be the same thing. Tenant sent is probably going to be a header tag as well, probably a smaller one. And then the date might will probably just be a span tag which will also float to the right. So we'll start by creating two divs. The first will be a title row, and then the second will be a date row. Then we'll just create the element. The first will be a button. Inside the button will be the word edit, and we'll apply a class to this. We'll just call it edit. And then the header. We'll try an H4 first, and then we'll write rental agreement in here. And we'll apply a class to that of, let's say, title. So the way we're going to style these individually is by using two classes in our CSS. So we have title row, and then in title row we have edit and title. So to do this, we can do dot title row dot edit. Then we can also do dot title row dot title. And really what this says here is look for an edit class inside an element that has class title row and apply the following styles. We'll have to apply a number of styles to the edit button to make it look right because this is the default what it looks like. But for the edit button we're trying to make, it looks to be a white background with a light gray border, dark gray text, and a rounded edge. So let's just work all those up. So if it's a white border, we can set that. And then we'll set the text to be about maybe CCC. And then the border does appear to be a little bit lighter. So we'll use EE. Uh, E, one pixel solid for our border. This is actually pretty close. We can clean this up a little further by adding a 
top margin, or I'm sorry, a top padding of four pixels and a left padding of eight pixels. And then we'll throw a font weight of bold on that. And then to make the edges rounded, we'll set a border radius of about five pixels, and then we'll set it to float right, so that way it goes to the right side of the screen. As far as styling the title, it is a lot easier because it almost already looks correct. The only thing we really have to do is we gotta set margin to zero to just take up all that extra space. And we have to set it to the proper color. The color looks to be about the same as the button, so we'll set that to CCC. And then the positioning is a little weird, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some padding of a, uh, Four pixels to the top and bottom and zero pixels to the left and right and then that brings that right in line with the button. The next is the 10 at tenths in the date row and this is going to function a lot like the previous one except we don't have a button. So we'll start with the span and we'll call it date and then this is going to be the September 01 2019. Then the second one is going to be a title. It's probably going to be a smaller title. We'll do like an H5 to start. It might actually need to be an H6. We'll see. And then here we'll put tenant since. And once again, we'll set up our CSS classes just like we did the other one. So it'll be date row and date and then date row and title. So we'll just make those real quick. Date row and date, date row and title. As far as the date, it's fairly straightforward because it's just text. It does appear to be a little darker and a little smaller. So we'll have to take that into account. So we'll start by floating to the right. That will bring it over to the right there. And then we're gonna set a font size of 10 pixels. It's a little bit smaller than default. And we'll set a font weight to bold. Have a look at that. So that is a little bit too dark. So we'll set the color to something like maybe CCC. But that looks a little bit too light. So we'll have to bring that down to maybe like 999. That appears to look good. As far as the title, it appears to be the same size. So we'll just drop that 10 pixels in there. And then as far as the color goes, it looks to be the color of the rest of it. So we'll just set that to CCC. And last but not least, we'll have to reduce that gap between tenant cents and rental agreements. There's a little bit too much gap there. So what we can do is we can set a margin top of that to be about 10 pixels. By default, it's like 15 or 20. So that'll, that'll bring it up a little bit. Next thing we're gonna add is the horizontal rule that goes below both of these. And this is really easy to add because the HR tag is actually a thing for this exact purpose. And you see that it adds a horizontal rule without us doing anything. Although it is a little bit darker than we wanted, so we could just come in here and style it. So we'll do HR, and then we'll set the border. You set the border to top for stylizing the HR. And then we'll do that with like CCC one pixel solid. That does appear to be still too dark, so we'll try EEE. Okay, that's a lot lighter, that's a lot better. Now there does appear to be too much of a gap between the horizontal roll and the date, and the reason that's happening is because we reduced the margin top, but we didn't reduce the margin bottom. So we'll have to go back to our date row title class here and set the margin bottom to be 10 pixels as well. You can see now that takes up the remainder of that space. Now everything's even. So next thing we're gonna build is this row that contains Frank Summer, current, a number, and then send message. And what I see here is I see a div that's going to wrap everything. And then inside that div, I see a div that's gonna wrap just this part, the name, the number, and the, the current label. The current label is gonna be a floating right element, and then the send message button is going to be a block level button. For the name of the number, I'll probably do a header tag for the name, I'll do a span for the number, and then I'll do a span or possibly an inline block for the badge here. So as we said, we'll make the outer div, we'll call this the name row. And then inside this, we'll need another div, which will wrap the name, the number, and then the badge. So inside here, we'll need one for the badge. We'll do a span class, call it uh, badge. And then here will be current. Also will be the header. We'll do like an H5. So Frank summer. And then also the number, we'll do another span. Class number. And then we'll just do like plus one, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then under that div finally will be a button which will have the word send message in it. And then we'll just call this class button. Or better yet, send. Now of course this is looking kind of nasty over here but that's fine, we'll work up all the styles for all this and it'll look really good. So we'll do this one at a time and we'll start with name row badge. We'll start by floating this element out to the right, just like we did all the rest of them. And then we'll next need to get the actual background color. We can do this with our color picker. Grab our color picker. We'll just click inside this button here, and then we'll copy that color into here. And then that should give us the right background. 
As far as the color of the text, we can do the exact same thing. We'll just use our color picker until we get the dark version of the text. We'll copy that hex code as well, and we'll put that into the color. We'll need to set a border radius and some padding. So for border radius, we'll set that to be about, say, 15 pixels. That should be good enough. As far as padding goes, we want the top padding to be less than the left and right padding, because that'll make it look like it does in the mock-up. So as far as the padding goes, we'll set a top and bottom padding to about 2 pixels. And then for the left and right padding, we'll set it to about 8 pixels. The only problem now is it's just a little bit too big. So we'll set the font size to be about 12 pixels, and then we'll set the font weight to be bold. And then that pretty much looks exactly like it should look right now. And the next is going to be the name. So name row dot name. As far as the name goes, the name is pretty easy, actually. It's really just no margin, so that will take up all the gap. And we just want to set it to the right color. It's, it's almost black, so we'll do like color 333. That's still a little bit too dark, maybe 666. That's a lot better. As far as the number row goes, that's also pretty easy. That's just going to be a smaller text, maybe font size 10, and then we'll set a different color. Call it like CCC. That's a little bit hard to read, so maybe we'll do like 999 instead. That looks a lot better. And then for the send button, what we can actually do is we can use the styles from the edit button and then just delete some of them that we don't need. Obviously, it's not a floating right element, so we can get rid of that. The next modification we need to make is we need to set the width to 100%. That way it will span across its parent. Now rather than having the border as EEE, we'll have the background as EEE. And then we're just going to set the border to zero. That way it removes the border altogether. Now our colors are a little bit messed up, but we can fix those right now. So the background specifically is going to be this hex code right here. And this is based on our uh, color picker that we just used. For the text inside it, we use our color picker again to get that exact gray, and that looks to be about this code right here. So now that's exactly the same color from the mock-up. Two final changes. We are going to want to add a little bit more top and bottom padding because it doesn't appear to be enough. And then we do want the text to be a little bit smaller. So we'll try 12 pixels. Will that work? That appears to be good. And the last thing we gotta do is just make a small gap between the send message button and the number label. You can see that there's a gap between the name of the number, but there's no gap between the number and the button. So all we need to do here is just set a margin top of maybe about eight pixels. And that appears to be good. Now all our styles are good, we just have to duplicate that row for the second row from the mockup. So we'll just copy the entirety of name row, copy it. We'll change Frank Summer to Anne Marie Summer, and then we'll change the numbers to just something else. It doesn't really matter what we put here. And we have a slight problem here because everything's stacked on top of each other. So what we're going to need to do is set a margin bottom for our name row. This will ensure that these two blocks are separated, but also our final show rental history block is separated from that. So we'll come to our style. We'll go to name row, which we don't actually have a thing for. So we'll do name row. We'll set a margin bottom of about maybe 10 pixels. That looks good. Now we're actually pretty much done here. We just have the show rental history left. So we'll put that right after name row. And for this, we could probably just use a header. We'll call it like an, an H5. And then here we'll do show rental history. And then as far as the little down arrow, you could either use an icon or you could just use a Unicode character, which is just a down arrow. We'll set a class to this and we'll call it history. We'll come into our CSS and then we'll make a new class for that. And then we can style this any way we want. So we'll start by applying a color, maybe 888. So things are positioned kind of weird. We could start by just saying the margin to zero. That will just clump everything together. But now we want to add a small margin to the top, maybe like 10 pixels or maybe a little bit more, like 30 pixels to bring it down. And then finally, we can set a cursor of pointer. And that way, when we put our mouse on top of it, you can see that it changes to a pointer. The last thing I want to change is I, I do think I made my box a little bit too large in the beginning. So I want to scroll back up here and I want to set this to like 240. And then if we put them together, we can compare the two and not gonna lie, they're looking pretty good. Now there's one big difference between the two and there's really nothing I can do about this is it's the fact that they're using a specific font that I simply don't have and I don't even know what the font name is and there's really no way that I could even find out what that font is. If I had the exact font they use and all the styles and the weights that come with it, I probably could have got this a lot closer. But I think for our purpose, this is good enough. And that's really all there is to it. For those of you who are confused about how everything fits together in the big picture and taking everything we learned from previous videos and applying it practically to something else, hopefully this was a big help to you. 
Now, as far as the HTML tags I used and the CSS properties I used in this video, I used just the basic stuff. It's the same stuff that I taught in the previous basic videos. So as you can see, this UI is very clean, which means that you really only need to know the basics to make clean looking UIs. There is absolutely nothing crazy done here. As always, if you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. And other than that, I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.